Hello all, I am Sharon Sunil, doing my Masters in Biotechnology from St. Thomas College, Belai. Today in this video, I will be explaining about the physical and chemical methods of immobilization of enzymes, guided by Dr. Anubhuti Jha. So this is the synopsis, I will be explaining the different methods of immobilization of enzymes with under these following headings given over here. So as we all know, enzymes are proteins composed of one polypeptides that is basically amino acid chain or made up of two or more associated polypeptide chains. Enzymes are biocatalyst that carries out all the essential biochemical reactions inside the body of an organism. Their unique feature is that they increase the rate of chemical reaction without themselves being permanently altered or consumed by the reaction. They also increase the reaction rate without changing the equilibrium between the reactants and the products. So the rate of these reactions are speeded up by well over a million fold. So the reaction that takes years to complete in the absence of catalyst can now occur within fractions of a second when in the presence of an appropriate enzyme. Since they remain unaltered after the completion of a reaction, therefore they can be used again and again. But when it comes to soluble enzymes, the limitation is that the is it's in its isolation from the product and the substrate. Most of the enzymes in the living organisms are attached to the cell membrane or entrapped within the cells. So this observation led to the concept that pure isolated enzymes may actually perform better when they are immobilized on a solid support. And in order to make enzyme utilization in biotechnological process more favorable, different methods for cost reduction have been put forward into practice and immobilization is one of them. So the term immobilized enzymes refers to enzymes physically confined or localized in a certain defined region of space with retention of their catalytic activities and which can be used repeatedly and continuously. So uh, in figure 1 we can see uh, how uh, in to the substrate free enzymes are being added and the reaction is allowed to be uh, allowed to occur and in that product is formed and along with that in that present is there present the enzymes. So with the help of dialysis the product and the enzymes are being separated but the free enzyme is lost after first use that is the catalytical activity is being lost uh, after the first use. But in the same case when we use an immobilized enzyme instead of a free enzyme when we add an immobilized enzyme into the substrate and when the reaction is allowed to happen, we get the immobilized enzyme and the product and after simple filtration, we get the product and the immobilized enzyme and in this case, the enzyme is not lost or neither the catalytic activity has been destroyed but we get the immobilized enzyme in the intact form again ready for the next use. So the principal components of an immobilized enzyme system are the enzyme the matrix and the mode of attachment. So the driving force for enzyme immobilization are the improvement of enzyme stability, increment of volume specific enzyme loading and simplification of biocatalyst recycling and the downstream processing. So basically the immobilization method exploits the fact that proteins have amino acid with different features whereby functional groups in side chains of these amino acids can be involved in binding to the solid support through various types of linkages and interactions. The first industrial use of immobilized enzyme was reported in 1967 by Chibata and co-workers who immobilized Aspergillus oryzae amino acyl for the resolution of synthetic DL amino acids into the corresponding optical active enantiomers. So at present, the use of immobilized enzyme is well established in various industries. Now as told before, the support or matrix immobilizes the enzyme by holding it either permanently or temporarily for a brief period of time. 
so there are wide variety of matrices or carriers or support available for immobilization the metrics used should be cheap and easily available and their reaction with the component of the medium or with the enzyme should be minimum as possible now the metrics or supports for immobilization of enzymes are grouped into three major categories that is the natural polymers the synthetic polymers and the inorganic materials now the natural polymers include polysaccharides and proteins and some of the natural polymers or natural supports are alginate collagen carrageenan cellulose gelatin starch and pectin second is synthetic polymers synthetic support are the largest number of support materials available for protein immobilization due to their physical and chemical characteristics so they are iron exchange resins or polymers and are insoluble supports with porous surface their porous surface can trap and hold the enzymes the examples are dae cellulose that is diethyl amino ethyl cellulose pvc uh, polyethyl glycol glutaraldehyde activated nylon etc now the third group of support system is the inorganic materials the surface of most inorganic support is mainly composed of oxide and hydroxyl groups such as silanol group in glass provide mild reactive surface for activation and protein binding some of the commonly used inorganic materials as supports are zeolites ceramics diatomaceous earth silica glass activated carbon etc methods of immobilization the selection of a particular method for immobilization of enzyme is based on a trial and error approach to choose the ideal one among the factors that decide a technique are the enzyme catalytic activity stability regenerability and cost factors are important to be noted now the methods for enzyme immobilizations can be classified into two one is the physical method and the other one is chemical method under physical methods comes adsorption entrapment and and encapsulation and under chemical methods come covalent binding and cross linking so starting with the physical methods for immobilization the first method that comes under it is the adsorption method so adsorption is the oldest easiest and fastest method for enzyme immobilization in this method enzyme is adsorbed to external surface of the support it is a reversible process where adsorption is dependent on the experimental variables such as ph nature of solvent ionic strength etc there is no permanent bond formation between the carrier or the support and the enzyme in adsorption method only weak bonds stabilizes the enzyme to the support or carrier so weak bonds like the ionic interaction the hydrogen bonds and the van der waal forces now the different methods of adsorptions are the first one the static process immobilization to carrier by allowing the solution containing enzyme to contact the carrier without steering so we just let uh, the enzyme and the um, support system to or support matrix to be still in a particular uh, container and they have been left without steering and they come uh, in contact by themselves and uh, the immobilization takes place by simple adsorption method now the second method which is the dynamic batch process in this the carrier is placed in the enzyme solution and mixed by steering or agitation the fourth third one is reactor loading process where carrier is placed in the reactor and then the enzyme solution is transferred to the reactor with continuous agitation the fourth one is the electrode position process where the carrier is placed near to an electrode in an enzyme bath and then the current is put on under the electric field the enzyme migrates to the carrier and is and gets deposited on its surface thereby immobilizing the enzymes the advantage of this adsorption method is that 
there is no pore diffusion limitation it is easy to carry out no reagents are required there is a very minimum activation step required it's cheap and the disadvantage of this particular method is that desorption of enzymes from the carrier can occur and the efficiency is quite very less in this particular method now the me next method which comes under this physical method of immobilization is the entrapment method enzymes can be immobilized by physical entrapment inside a polymer or a gel matrix the size of the matrix pores is such that the enzyme is retained while the substrate and product molecules pass through it so in this technique commonly referred to as lattice entrapment the enzyme is not subjected to strong binding forces and structural distortion now pore size of the matrix is adjusted to prevent the loss of enzyme now the examples of commonly used matrices for entrapment methods are polyacrylamide gels cellulose triacetate agar gelatin etc now the enzymes can be entrapped by several ways and some of them are as follows the first one is the enzyme inclusion in gels this is an entrapment or trapping of enzyme inside the gel second one is the enzyme inclusion in fibers here the enzymes are trapped in a fiber format of the matrix third the enzyme inclusion in microcapsule in this case the enzymes are trapped inside a macro uh, microcapsule matrix the hydrophobic and the hydrophilic forms of the matrix polymerize to form a microcapsule containing enzyme molecule inside it so the advantage of this entrapment method can be is that it is a fast method of immobilization it is quite cheap it is easy to practice at a very small scale and there are very mild conditions required and there is a very less chance of conformational changes in this enzyme the disadvantage is that there is a chances of leakage of enzyme pore diffusion limitation is there in this there is chances of uh, microbial contamination and it has not been very much successful in industrial processes the third meta method which comes under the physical immobilization method is the encapsulation method so in this type of immobilization uh, is done by enclosing the enzyme in a membrane capsule so it refers to the process of spherical particle formation wherein a liquid or suspension is enclosed in a semi permeable membrane like nitrocellulose or nylon the membrane may be polymeric lipoidal uh, lipoprotein based or non ionic in nature so there are three distinct ways of encapsulation they are as follows first is building of a special membrane reactor the second step is formation of emulsions and the th third step is stabilization of emulsions to form capsules or microcapsules so in this method the effectiveness depends basically upon the stability of enzymes inside the capsule the advantage of this method is that it is cheap and simple method large quantity of enzymes can be immobilized by encapsulation the disadvantage of this method is that it has a pore size limitation and only small substrate molecules is able to cross the membrane now moving on forward to the next criteria of immobilization of enzyme which is the chemical method of immobilization and under that the first method is the covalent binding so immobilization of enzymes can be achieved by creation of covalent bonds between the chemical groups of enzyme and the chemical groups of the support so this technique is widely used but however the co co covalent binding is often associated with loss of some enzyme activity so the inert support usually requires pre treatment that is pre activation has to be done to the support before it binds to the enzyme so the important functional group of the enzyme that provide chemical groups to form covalent bonds with the support or carrier are alpha carboxyl group alpha amino group at n terminal of enzyme and phenol ring of tyrosine the thiol group of cysteine and etc the carrier or the support commonly used for covalent bind binding are the carbohydrates example cellulose DEA cellulose agarose the synthetic agents like polyacrylamide 
protein carriers like collagen, gelatin, amino group bearing carriers example amino benzyl, cellulose, inorganic carriers like porous glass, silica, cyanogen bromide, uh, agarose and SNBR sapphiros. So, uh, these are the following, uh, these are the uh, carriers being used. Now, following are the common methods of uh, covalent binding which is being used. The first one is the cyanogen bromide activation. So, the uh, inert support material which can be a cellulose or a sapphirose or a sapphadex, okay, containing glycol groups are activated by CNBR which then binds to the enzyme and immobilizes them. The second one is dio diosetation. Some of the support materials like the amino benzyl cellulose, amino derivatives of polystyrene, amino selenized por porous glass are subjected to dios diosetation on treatment with NaNO2 and HCl. They in turn bind covalently to thyrosyl or histyl groups of enzymes. The next one is the peptide bond formation. Enzyme immobilization can also be achieved by the formation of peptide bonds between the amino or carboxyl group of the support and the carboxyl or amino group of the enzyme. So, the support material is first chemically treated to form active functional groups. And the fourth one is the activation by bi or polyfunctional reagents. So, some of the reagents such as glutaraldehyde can be used to create bonds between the amino group of the enzyme and the amino group of the support. Example, amino ethyl cellulose, albumin, amino alkylated porous glass, etc. The advantage of covalent binding are there is a strong linkage of enzymes to the support, there is no leakage or desorption problem, it is a comparatively simple method. There is a variety of support with different functional group available and it is widely applicable. The disadvantage is that the chemical modification of enzyme leading to the loss of functional conformation of enzymes occur and the enzyme inactivation by changes in the conformation when it undergoes reaction at the active site also occurs. So, this can be overcome through the immobilization in the presence of enzyme substrate or a competitive inhibitor. Now, the second method that comes under the chemically immobilization uh, method of uh, enzyme is the cross-linking process. So, in this, uh, this is the only uh, method in which solid support is not used. So, the absence of a solid support is a characteristic feature of immobilization of enzymes by cross-linking. So, the enzyme molecules are immobilized by creating cross-links between them through the involvement of polyfunctional reagents. So, these reagents in fact react with the enzyme molecules and create a bridge which forms the backbone to hold the enzyme molecules. There are several reagents in use for cross-linking. These include glutaraldehyde, disobenzidine, hexamethylene and toline. Now, glutaraldehyde is the most extensively used cross-linking reagent. It reacts with lysyl residue of the enzymes and forms a shift base. The cross links formed between the enzyme and the glutaraldehyde are irreversible and can withstand extreme pH and temperature conditions. Glutaraldehyde cross linking has been successfully used to immobilize several industrial enzymes, example glucose, isomerase, penicillin, amidase, etc. Now, a recent advancement to cross-linking method is the formation of CLEC which is the cross-linking enzyme crystals, CLEA which is the cross-linking enzyme aggregate and sperizymes. Now, advantage of cross-linking methods are it is used mostly as a means of stabilizing adsorbed enzyme and also for preventing leakage. The disadvantage of this method is that cross-linking may cause significant changes in the active site of enzyme which may lead to loss of activity. Now, the advantage of immobilized enzymes are increased functional efficiency of enzymes, 
enhanced reproductivity of the process they are undertaking, reuse of enzymes, continuous use of enzymes, less labor input in the processes, saving in capital cost and investment of the process, minimum reaction time, less chance of contamination products, more stability of products, stable supply of products in the market, improved process control and high enzyme substrate ratio. And if there is an advantage, there are some disadvantages of immobilized enzymes. So, even though there are many advantages of immobilized enzyme, there are some disadvantages also like the high cost of the isolation, purification and recovery of active enzyme which is one of the most important disadvantage. The industrial applications are limited and only very few industries are using immobilized enzyme or immobilized whole cells. The catalytic properties of some enzymes are reduced or completely lost after their immobilization on support or carrier. Some enzymes become unstable of after immobilization. Enzymes are inactivated by the heat generated in the system. Now, the application of enzyme immobilization are first one is the industrial production. Industrial production of antibiotics, beverages, amino acid, etc., uses immobilized enzyme. Second is the biomedical application. Immobilized enzymes are widely used in the diagnosis and treatment of many diseases. Immobilized enzyme can be used to overcome inborn metabolic disorders by the supply of immobilized enzyme. Immobilization techniques are effectively used in drug delivery system, especially in oncogenic sites. The third one is the food industry. Enzymes like pectinase and cellulase immobilized on suitable carriers are successfully used in the production of jams, jellies and syrups from fruits and vegetables. Now in research, a research activity extensively uses many enzymes. So, the use of immobilized enzyme allows a researchers to increase the efficiency of different enzymes such as horse radish peroxidase in blotting experiments and different proteases for cells or organelle lysis. Next is the production of biodiesel from vegetable oils. The next application is wastewater management treatment of sewage and industrial effluent. Then in textile industry through scorning, bio polishing and designing of fabrics and in the in, uh, detergent industry where immobilization of lipase enzyme for effective dirt removal from clothes is being done. These are the references used. Thank you.